they're in the road. We've got them in front of us. Excellent. So managed to track them down. There's a couple of them in front. I can't see how many, but there's definitely one, two, three that I can see, four that I can see. So that's good news. Let's try and catch up with them. Ah, and little cubs. So it's the Inkuhuma pride that we've got, which is good news. They're all here by the looks of things. And so they're going to hopefully stay in the road. It doesn't look like any of the Birminghams are here at the moment. Our little one is going to be right in the middle. There we go. So there's the whole pride walking down the road, which is fantastic news. So we've got sub-adults, a couple of the females, some cubs. Doesn't look like any of the boys that are with us, but hopefully they will be around as well and it looks as though they're quite hungry and like they want to hunt so i'm going to try and see if i can kind of follow them through the course of the morning and see what we can find with them and while we watch them sort of take a hiatus and just listen let's send you across to byron with a rather snoozy elephant well, one of these lines, the sub-adult male, has decided he is king of the castle and he's perched himself on top of a mound and looking very regal on top there. The rest of the sub-adults are slowly coming down and are moving in this direction. The females have all gone already. They've moved quite far. And I think these sub-adults know the females are hunting. And so they've just sat back and are allowing the girls to go and do their work. And so what I might do is try and see if I can catch up with the females because if the females are hunting they might have spotted something already and that's why these sub adults know just to stay behind and to stay where they are now the male has just stood up he's having a look at the others and he's going to go trotting after them as only a boy can do so they seem as though they kind of just maybe going to wander off for water there you can see the little cub right at the top and then one of the sub adults in the front one of the sub adult girls in front so there's the little one bouncing down the road as it does now just now when we came past it and drove down towards this area we found that this little cub was almost chasing the car it was kind of trotting along with us for a while until it met up with the others and then it decided just to sit there but there come the rest how cool is this here we go hello little one <laughs> well, what are you up to you can't tackle that it's too big for you it's not going to stop it trying I'll tell you what though that little cub is going to be a serious strong individual later in life because it probably gets bullied all the time by all of these sub-adults. The sub-adults will be, you know, they'll pick on it quite a bit and because it doesn't have any other siblings, it's got to play with the sub-adults all the time. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all works out. Now Tax has just joined us, so he's going to stay with the Inkuhuma, well, the Inkuhuma sub-adults. I want to just shoot ahead quickly and just see what's going on with the adults because they crossed over and there was already one female that I saw going up this hill. So I want to see where she's gone and what's going on on the top. We know there was some buffalo in this area um, yesterday. And so maybe they're busy hunting a herd of buffalo. I don't know. We're going to try and have a little look. And while we do, I'm going to send you back across to Byron and those sleeping lions. Byron, I'm just trying to keep you on your toes. After yesterday, you couldn't find a leopard sitting underneath a tree with no grass. I thought I'd just check if you're awake this morning and actually know what you're doing and whether or not you've got, you know, an elephant or lions and if you actually caught me. But I'm glad that you are awake. It's good to, to have Byron awake. It means that hopefully he will spot the leopard this morning under the tree. Now, the whole pride is starting to come through now. So it seems as though I've, so far I've counted four adult females. The rest of them are just here on my left-hand side. They're going to come out nicely onto the road fairly shortly. We just had to get around onto the other side. And they kind of stopped and all the cubs have now caught up. And there they go. I believe that there are tracks for buffalo around. We know the buffalo was seen in this area yesterday. I just want to try and get back and try and get back onto the road because we'll get them all filing out onto the road itself where it's going to be a lot more open than it is here. So here it's quite thick and dense and a lot of bushes, but where they're going is going to be nice and open and clear and they're heading towards sort of treehouse dam area. So I wonder if they've maybe just missed the tracks of these buffalo or they've singled out an individual dugger boy that might have been dropped off the herd. You never know. It's interesting with the Inkuma pride because sometimes this is what they do is they know that there is a um, individual around and then they try and start hunting these kind of lone male buffalo as opposed to these big herds but they look like they mean business this morning the way that they're walking is of females that want to try 
and kind of hunt and try and get food. It's going to be very cool. I just want to try and get all the way in front of them and then we'll turn around and we can try and kind of reverse with them walking up the road. It's going to be epic is what it's going to be. So say good morning to Tax. Morning Tax, how are you? Good. So we're going to try and just quickly turn around now. And like I said, we'll try and just reverse with them, which should be quite fun. Evie, you're wondering about these black spots in the lion's ears and, and whether or not they serve a purpose. So, yes, they serve a purpose. Um, those black spots on the top of the ears help with them being able to see each other when they are hunting. So when they are going after various food items and they spread out, those black spots on the back of the ears means that the females can see one another. It also helps with the cubs following their mother in thick areas where there's lots of grass. They are able to get a situation where the cubs can then see mom walking through the grass and then follow it. It's much the same as the black tip to the tail. It's basically a following mechanism. Now I just want to try and keep going straight back. Sorry, VM, I know it's quite bumpy, but it's just such a cool view to have the lions walking down the road straight at us. And it looks like Amber Eyes in front at the moment. I think it's Amber Eyes in front. It looks like it's her. But they are a really good looking pride, aren't they? Look at how sort of strong and muscular they look. They're always kind of well built and they never look as though they completely out of it. The one female that I don't see is the old female with the hip injury. I haven't seen her yet. I'm pretty sure she is here somewhere, but I haven't seen her yet. But how cool is this? Oh, look at that A little bit of bonding that takes place. There comes the other ones. <laughs> nope, I've decided they're not going to do that. Now I'm just going to keep going with them. I don't want to be too close to them because otherwise they might go off the road and away from us. So if we just give them a nice amount of space, then they generally are quite happy just to walk in the road in front of us. Bree Bree, it is a lion parade at the moment. They are parading as well as you could ever imagine. They're kind of walking down the road in single file, and it's a long line these days. I mean, obviously, they don't have the males with them today, but still, it's, you know, 12 lions is a, is a lot of lions to, to look out for and watch, and so it is getting quite large, this pride, and hopefully it will continue. Sorry, VM, I know I'm reversing badly. I'm trying to just look out because I can see something in the background here. I think it's just some impalas that are busy shouting at the lions. I don't know if the impalas would have seen them from where we are. But I heard an alarm call behind us. So I just want to get my binoculars out and have a look behind me and just see what it is. Ah, uh, no, it's buffalo. There's buffalo behind us. So they're going to be hunting buffalo. They're all lying down behind us here. And I'm just going to let Tax know because... I'm sure Tex wants to maybe just catch up with us. Yeah, Tex, there's a Shlambian Yari behind us here that they're walking straight towards. Now they're hunting a warthog, I believe. So they seem as though they've spotted the warthog. Look at how she's running. She's going to come running right past us. So typical amber eyes who's focused on that. Now, I don't think they've seen the buffalo yet. The buffalo are all the way behind us lying down. They've spotted a warthog instead. And I'm pretty sure this pride would rather go after a buffalo than a warthog but if there's a meal on option then you never know what's going to happen so they definitely are hungry and they're interested but I think the buffalo would be a far better bet except Amber Eyes is now focused on this warthog I don't think she's going to let it up anytime soon the problem is her chasing a warthog certainly will set off these buffalo and the buffalo will become far more aware that these lions are around but I wonder if she's going to go try and dig it out you see she's walking straight towards the mound Vim did you see the warthog in the mound it came out and then it ran back in. Or did it run away? It ran away. It ran away. Okay, so I didn't see. Now, we're going to do a action broadcast just because of what's around us. And we're going to try and see if we can maybe see if these lions are going to hunt. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a cloudy South Africa and lions that are on the prowl. So, my name is Tristan, and on camera today, I've got Viem. And as I was saying, these lions are on the prowl. They're busy hunting at the moment, and there's lots going on because not only are the lions kind of moving towards a termite mound where there is a warthog that we've just seen run, but there is a whole bunch of buffalo that are behind us as well. You see the lions? They've just gone on chasing there. 
So they're chasing something. Let's try and see if we can catch up with them. I don't know if they're going to get this right because, well, warthogs are quite agile animals and lions need to be fairly quick. But you can see they've run into the bush here and they look like they're chasing it. But the problem is it's taking them away from the buffalo, which is a meal that this pride really likes. Now, what I'm kind of hoping is that this warthog managed to get away from them and that they actually end up going more towards the buffalo than anything else because the buffalo is what this pride specializes in. They're very good at hunting buffalo. Warthogs are not so much. So their counterparts in other parts of the world are pretty good at hunting warthogs, but these lions here in South Africa, it's not really their speciality. And the reason why is because warthogs are really quite small for a big pride. There's 12 members of this pride in total, and that means that it's quite difficult for them to get a lot of food out of a warthog. But something like a buffalo is the perfect amount of food for lions. Now remember, this is interactive and it is live, so you can actually ask questions. You can just post your questions in the comment section below, and we will try and answer as many as possible. I think they've missed the warthog, which might be a sort of blessing in disguise because they're now mobile straight towards where those buffalo are all sleeping and the buffalo have no idea that they're here so these lines moving towards the buffalo is actually a really good thing and what we're going to do is we're going to try and just get back to the road because what i want is i don't want to try and be crashing through the bush and kind of alerting the buffalo to the lion's presence so if i get back onto the road it might be a situation where the lions will have a better opportunity to try and hunt now aaron you're wondering what time it is it's six o'clock in the morning well, five to six, according to Kirsty. My watch is a little bit faster, but it's five to six in the morning, and so it is perfect time for lions to be active. It's also a cloudy, cool, overcast morning, and lions tend to be a lot more active in weather like this than they are in bright sunshine. Now, what I want is for one of these females to go on top of this mound to be able to then see the buffalo, because I don't think they've actually seen the buffalo yet. I think they were trailing buffalo, but they actually haven't seen them as yet. Now, the reason why she's standing where she is, is because she's looking into the hole of this mound, hoping that maybe another warthog might be inside. And you'll find lions will actually sometimes dig out warthogs. But there we go. You see the one lioness is going to go on top of the mound itself and she's going to probably from there be able to spot those buffalo. If she just looks to her left, that's where the buffalo are. And like I say, this pride, when they see buffalo, they go into a completely different mode and they really will try and pursue them as much as possible. Whether they'll be successful is obviously in, remains to be seen because well, lions are not always the most successful hunters. But let me reposition Vian so that you can see this lioness better on top of the mound. So, Caitlin, the lionesses most certainly will bring down buffalo without the males. You'll find that they are capable, particularly because this pride, there's five adult lionesses. So working as a unit together, they should be able to do it. Also, this pride, because of the area that they're in, buffalo is pretty much the animal that they've learned to hunt from cubs. So they've grown up hunting buffalo, so they have very good technique when hunting buffalo. And so they can and, and will bring down a buffalo if, if, if they get anywhere near it. They are probably one of the most successful hunting prides we've got. Look, you see she's digging so she's starting to dig into this mound i wonder if she can hear another warthog inside here and that's why she's starting to dig down and try and see if she can get it the reason why they'll dig for warthogs is because warthogs even though they are not a huge meal for lions we're in a situation where it's probably much easier to dig for a warthog than it is to wrestle with a buffalo and so it makes life a lot easier. Look, you see she's going down into the, the hole and she's digging as much as she can. The other lions are also coming up. There's some of the sub-adults. So like I was saying in this pride, there's five adult females and then there's six sub-adults, five of which are girls and one boy. Now the rest of the sub-adults haven't quite caught up yet. They're slowly but surely starting to arrive and so we'll see them arriving and then there's one small cub in amongst all of this as well that is about six months old. Now let's see if she starts digging in here. What they're going to do is they've got, the thing about this is they've got both sides covered. So if they can dig out far enough, they're going to get to a point where the warthog maybe is, gets trapped and it tries to come out a different hole. And that's why one lioness will sit at one side and another lioness on the other side. But in saying all of this, warthogs are no sort of easy feat in terms of the way that warthogs will try and fight. They'll also be inside that mound with their tusks facing forward. So Lioness is going to be very careful about the way that she does it. Now here comes the young male who's 
just getting towards two years old. Now all these sub-adults are almost two years old. And so let's see whether or not he gets involved. They're just starting to learn how to hunt these sub-adults and how to contribute into what's going on. Look, you see how they're interested? So they've obviously seen the adults do this before and they're going to be learning from this process. Now, sorry, Kirst, if you can just repeat that again. There comes another lioness past us. So, Jerry, you, our presence doesn't really affect the lions, and I'll tell you why. Because these lions have grown up with the cars being around, we also we limit the number of vehicles that are, are with the lions. So there's only, generally, we'll put in maximum of three cars in the area. We also, you can see the lions have not paid any attention to us whatsoever. So as long as we give them space to do what they want to do and we don't really harm them too much, then they're able to to kind of do everything naturally. The other thing is, is that they don't see us as food or a threat or anything like that. So they're going about their business just like they would do normally. But this poor warthog, if there is a warthog inside there, it is in a lot of trouble because there are a number of lions now that have come to the attention. There comes a little one. Hello, little one. You better be careful because a steam rolling warthog is not going to be nice for a little cub. That's for sure. And this warthog, if it does come out, is going to come out at a rate of knots and hopefully, like I say, it doesn't run straight at us because that won't be ideal at all. But they're still digging on the other side of the mound and there must be something in there because they wouldn't be digging like this if they couldn't hear anything. So it obviously is a situation where they're hearing this warthog still moving around in there and now what they're trying to do is they're trying to dig in and try and get as deep as they can inside there, which is pretty insane. It's amazing to actually watch how they go about it. Jacqueline, I agree, the warthog is definitely not going to be enough food for all of these lions. So luckily the buffalo are not too far away as well. It looks as though maybe they're losing interest a bit. I see some of the females are going off the mound now and walking away. And so I wonder if they've lost interest in actually trying to get to this warthog. Maybe the warthog's too deep down and they can't actually get as far enough in as they want to. And they've decided, well, buffalo is a better option than warthog. Let's just see how it plays out. They've spoiled for choice this morning. And it's interesting because we've had a situation where over the past few years we've had very dry conditions and there's been very few buffalo around. And so these lions have had to change a little bit of the way that they do things. Little cub, what are you doing? So the little one is being naughty because it could very easily get killed by a warthog that runs out of there. Big warthog male will have big tusks on the front of its face and can do a lot of damage to a little cub. So the little cub needs to be a bit careful, but it's following what the adults are doing. So it's learning from the adults and that's why we're seeing it kind of coming down onto that shelf and actually looking around and, and sort of trying to investigate why the lionesses are looking inside there. Now, I think we're in a sort of temporary hiatus at the moment where they're trying to work out if they can get to it. Some of the lionesses are down and I think moving off towards the buffalo. This is all the sub-adults that are left. You see, look, they're digging, but not really in the right place. The young male hasn't quite gotten this movement down just yet. So he needs to dig in there. That's where he needs to start digging. But it's dangerous work going down that hole. He's going to have to be careful. And you can see lots and lots of flies. I think the adults have actually moved off. I want to try and catch up with the adults because they're moving off towards the buffalo. And I think they'll be far more serious about the buffalo hunt than they are going to be about a warthog hunt. So let's just try and check. I want to just see where the females are because if they've moved, like I say, the buffalo are straight up ahead of us. So we might have a situation where they're already kind of watching those buffalo rather than this warthog already, which is good news in a way because it means the hunt continues and I'm far more confident of their buffalo hunting ability than I am of their warthog hunting ability. So let's just coast along there. The buffalo are straight ahead of us. So and there's the other female lioness. So she's just come out. This is the injured female that we've got. See, she's got a rather nasty injury on her hip. But the buffalo are straight ahead. And she's on the one side of the buffalo. There the buffalo are. They don't know that the lions are here. So the lions seem as though they're pushing towards. There's some more lions. They are going. They've spotted the buffalo now. So let's see how this plays out. I'm pretty sure they're going to try and hunt these buffalo as best that they can. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get onto the road and give us a chance to be able to kind of stay out of the thickets which means we won't alert these buffalo to the lion's presence nearly as much and what we also want is to try and position us in a way that 
what's going to happen here basically is Lions are going to run in and Buffalo are going to stampede all over the place. And so it would be nice to be positioned in a way that we can try and see the Buffalo and try and work out where they're going to run. And so stopping where we are here, hopefully the Lions are going to chase the Buffalo away from us rather than towards us. But that wound on her hip, for those of you that are concerned about it, it is looks really bad and it looks very nasty. But I can promise you that that wound was maybe four times the size that it, than it is right now. And so it, it's happened a long time ago and it's slowly but surely starting to kind of stitch together and try and start healing. So it's going to take a little longer until it does heal properly, but she is getting much, much better. It doesn't look like it, but she is much better than what she was three, four months ago. But there's definitely going to be a hunt. How long it's going to take until they start hunting, I'm not quite sure. You know, lions are patient animals. They're going to be sizing up exactly what's going on, and then they're going to try and start moving in. But you can see they've spotted the buffalo now, and now it's time for them to start going after them. It's going to be really exciting to see how this goes. The buffalo still don't know that the lions are here. They're all lying down, and so it's a situation where we're going to have a bit of a standoff for now and then you'll find that the lions will rush in there and what they're going to try and do is separate an individual and target a certain member of that buffalo herd so they're going to look for maybe a female or a youngish one that's going to be much easier to bring down than those big males because the big males with those massive horns are very dangerous for a lion and this lioness and the injury that she's got could have potentially been from hunting buffalo we don't really know we didn't see what happened to her she just kind of ended up with the injury so it's a dangerous game and they need to be very very careful about the way that they do it but it's good news that this lioness is here because she's the oldest of the pride and she's been around for quite some time and will have the experience on how to hunt these um, buffalo and how to bring them down and so it's going to be interesting how they go about it but you can see she's motionless at the moment and all she's doing is she's studying this process she's trying to work out okay which way are we going to go how are we going to get into these buffalo but the fact that she's on the right and the rest of the pride on the left is not the worst thing because they can almost kind of do this pincer movement around the buffalo and try and chase buffalo towards each other and what they're going to try and do is try and just get onto the back of one and then pin it and then they try and just wear that buffalo down but the buffalo will fight back and you'll find that whole that whole herd will try and protect each other and so they've got to be pretty good about the way that they do it and they've got to be pretty efficient about getting onto the back of that buffalo and separating it out and then you'll find some of the females will have to run as blockers and almost try and keep the buffalo herd at bay while the others are busy trying to kill it so it's an interesting process watching and it's the age-old battle that is raged for many many years out here in the Kruger Park area. It's almost like the calm before the storm. It's gotten quiet now. Now, I believe a lot of you are saying this is very exciting. It is as exciting as it gets. Like I say, Buffalo Lions is probably one of the most intense battles that we have out here in the natural world in this part of South Africa. And, and the reason why I say that is because, well, buffalo are, are one of the strongest animals that we have, pound for pound. They are incredibly aggressive when they feel like their life is threatened. And so they often get quite sort of grumpy and, and they'll fight back like I say whereas the lions they use their power in numbers and it's this kind of game the chess game that goes on and so you see lions going buffalo going and it kind of becomes this back and forth battle over some time so it's going to be really interesting to watch I know that these females are looking for buffalo they haven't had as many buffalo as they normally have over the course of the f of a few months or year because we've had so few buffalo due to the drought but we've just had really good rains which means that the grass is all stood up and that means the buffalo have now come in to feed off it and these lionesses are on their trail on purpose so let's see how this goes what we'll also find is all the sub adults probably would have backed off now they would have lay up and watching the adults go about it and they're going to learn now from the adults as to how they go about hunting buffalo and then over time those sub adults are going to also start joining so it's not only do we have the hunt going on but we also have a learning process happening it's going to be super interesting to watch how this plays out i can promise you that they are going to hunt though i can guarantee that they will chase these buffalo at some point now, Linda, you say the suspense is killing you. It is uh, one of those things that it kind of, you sit here and you wait and you wait and you wait and it kind of builds to this crescendo and then all of a sudden chaos will erupt and lions will run, buffalo will run, they'll be stampeding and grunting and lions kind of growling if they're on top of a buffalo and it all gets quite crazy. So as much as it's a lot of suspense now, it is going to get 
quite chaotic pretty shortly, I would imagine. It just takes one lioness to break cover and then it will go crazy. Are Laramua? Yes, there are buffalo cows in amongst that herd, so it's not only males in that grouping. There are a lot of males in there, and uh, calves, so little babies. So, yes, there also should be calves. If it's the same herd we've been seeing yesterday, there was little babies in that herd. It doesn't look like a massive herd in comparison to what we've seen over the past few days. There's been a buffalo herd that's been hanging around in the last couple of weeks that's been over 500, and they're a really large herd. And then they kind of split up into this group of 250 that kind of hangs around. But this looks like maybe only 40, 50 animals. And so this would be a manageable size for this part of lions. And there, I hope there's some calves in there that would make maybe kind of look like it's tantalizing enough for the lions. But the lions at the end of the day want to try and go after more than just calves. Because there's so many of them, a calf is really not enough food for the whole pride. They need to get, you know, more. They need to be able to get something like a fully grown female buffalo or maybe even a male to feed them really well. But let's see, she's still watching. You can see she's very alert and she's not moving because she doesn't want to give her position away. So child of the universe, a lot of strategy is going into this hunt. That's why this lioness isn't moving. She's working out exactly what's going on. She's watching her fellow pride members to see what they're up to and what they're doing. And so she's kind of bouncing between where she's going to position herself, where the others are, and they're going to try and work out a way to get around these buffalo. Look, you see she's going now? So she's trying to get back into the thickets. So what she's going to do is she's going to get into the thickets and she's going to try and loop around on that side. And what you probably find is she's going to be the chasing lioness. So if she can get round onto the other side of these buffalo and then she chases them towards the net that is the other lionesses on the other side of the road, that's how they often do it. So there's a lot of strategy that goes into lion hunting. And what amazes me about watching this is how these lionesses are able to pick up subtle cues from each other without any communication whatsoever. So just through body language, movement of each lioness, they're able to coordinate themselves and get themselves into positions where they're able to hunt. I find it absolutely fascinating how lions work and predators like this that are, are group-based predators, so even things like hyenas and cheetah coalitions, how they're able to tell each other about what's going on just by kind of looking and seeing what the other one's body language is. Now, what I'm going to do is just roll forward a little bit and try and just keep a visual of at least some of the lionesses so we know roughly what's going on because otherwise it becomes quite difficult to work out which way things are going to get chased. And so we're just going to try and roll forward a little bit. The buffalo are quite used to vehicles kind of viewing them, so they're not going to be too mobile. There come some more of the sub-adults. They're moving. This lioness is now stopped and is just sitting dead still. She's still kind of watching the buffalo. So what I'm going to do is just move and put ourselves in a position where we'll be able to stop for the remainder of the morning. But there's the buffalo all lying down. You can see they kind of having a bit of a rest. This is what buffalo do in the evenings and early mornings is that they'll sleep like this in a fairly open patch in case the lions are around and then as soon as the you know it gets a little bit warmer then they're up and starting to move and feed and the reason why they don't like feeding during the night is because well they make a lot of noise when they feed so there's a lot of hooves moving there's a lot of stamping there's a lot of bellowing and it makes it difficult to hear lions so they prefer to rest like this until the sun's up a little bit and then they start to move and start to go and feed but this is a perfect size herd for these lions to be hunting. I just saw the lioness that we had on our right side. She's just come past me now and she's still mobile towards where they are. So she's slowly but surely sneaking up towards them. So Matt, you asking how many lions I can currently see that are stalking. So there's the five adult females that are stalking at the moment and then there is the sub-adult male looks like he's also right up in the front lines and one or two of the sub-adult females. So in total, there's probably about seven or eight of them that are stalking. I think that some of the sub-adult females are probably still a little nervous of buffalo, but at the moment we have you know, all the adult lionesses that are in front. So there's some of them there. You can see how well camouflaged they are and how well hidden. And I can guarantee you exactly what's going on here is that lioness is trying to get all the way around those buffalo and she's going to try and chase them straight at, well, she's going to try and come around and push these buffalo straight at the herd or the rest of the pride that's lying in wait on our left-hand side. So I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. It's what they often do is they'll use one as the, the sort of chaser and then the rest are the ones that try and grab and they, they rely on the buffalo 
buffalo stampeding towards where the rest are and then they single out an individual as those buffalo break cover and run they single out a female or a male or a sub adult that they then jump onto and they try and grab but there's lots of females in here so i wouldn't be surprised if there are some calves as well in this section that are in serious danger at the moment you can see the buffalo are alert even though they're sleeping their heads are up they're listening they're looking in this direction so they are alert they know that probably there we go wait hold on look the whole herd's up now this is where we've got to be a bit careful you see how they form a front look at that you see there is a calf in there as well so the whole herd is now moving straight towards the lions the lions are on our left hand side so let's see if they're going to break cover yes the lions are going after them on the left this is insane so here the lions go look the lions are here running through so they are going after look 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 they're going after the female with the calf there comes the others they're coming to chase her so the big bulls are in here as well now there's other lions on our left but they spotted the calf that's what they were going for so the calf is the one that's going to be in the most danger they're going to try and shift and move this herd around to try and get this calf isolated you see that's what they want is they want the calf to be left on its own and then they can run in and grab it so there's lions on all sides at the moment and this is what they want is to try and kind of get to that calf look you see how she's coming in so she's going to try and do this now she'll want to wear this female down as much as she can and try and get to that little baby the little baby is going to have a trouble you see how she gives way to the adult male now the, the rest of the pride needs to come in as well and help this female otherwise she's going to have a problem but here comes the rest of the pride they're coming trotting this direction see here they come so they've now going to try and single out this calf there comes a big bull who's chasing them now this is what I was saying about lions and buffalo. It's absolute pandemonium when they decide that they actually want to chase. So they've now worked out that there's a female and a young one. Now let's see what's going to happen here. So they try and wear these buffalo down. You see, is they try and go after them and they try and get a situation where they tire them out. And the big bulls are the ones that are coming into the aid of the cows. You see how these males are the ones that are trying to defend the calf. And so they are the big enforcers of this whole unit. So they're going to try and keep these lions at bay. So the big males out, then these are the calves in front and the lions are going to have a tough time of it because as long as the bulls are trying to protect the herd, if getting close to those calves is going to be almost impossible. But the lions won't give up. They now know that they can try and start causing cracks and weaknesses. So they're going to dive into these herds and they're going to try and push them as much as possible. A lot of the lions are behind me. Tam, you say that your heart is racing. I know it's crazy, isn't it? It just becomes an absolute kind of situation where your heart beats at a million miles an hour and now the real war starts. It now becomes a kind of war of the trenches. You can see lionesses are running all over the place. The sub-adults probably are a little nervous of this whole thing at the moment. They don't quite know how to handle what's going on. So you see there are some other cars that are here that are just in the area and I wonder if maybe let's turn because it, I don't want to get too close inside all of this because what happens is is when the lions chase each other and chase the buffalo it becomes a situation as you saw where there's a stampede and if you're caught in the middle of that you're in trouble so there we go there's a nice view of lions and buffalo how crazy is this what a way to start our day guy you're wondering if it's really live it is really live we are out in the middle of Africa watching this happening right now so it is as live as live can be and you can see here come some of the sub adults so they're trying to watch the adults to see how to do this and what's going to happen is you're going to find that these lions are going to keep trying to push these buffalo I don't know if they've gotten this right I think they've unfortunately went a little early and the opportunity to get that calf was blown by the fact that it was just one lioness if there had been the other lionesses there they would have been able to try and kind of tempt that female to chase one and then somebody else could have run in and grabbed it but look there's a big bull buffalo that's still kind of watching maybe what they're going to try and do is separate one bull and then they're going to try but no here comes a buffalo you see he's charging in and the lioness is the one that's held her ground you see how the sub adults ran there so they're still very nervous of buffalo and rightly so if a buffalo gets hold of one of these lions this whole herd will get involved and they'll trample and stampede and try and hurt these lions as much as possible so look at that 
That is a picture of Africa. You've got the lioness and a big bull buffalo kind of standing his ground. And isn't it incredible? Did you see how immediately the bulls came right out to the fore to protect this herd? It's absolutely amazing to me how it works with both the lions and the buffalo, how they are both so organized, even in a moment of panic. Now, that little cub needs to be careful. So cub, you see right at the back, out on the fringes, and lionesses in front at the moment. Now, hopefully, these lionesses are going to, like I say, try and just kind of single out an individual and keep trying to hunt. That's one. But you see the bulls are now turning, going back to the herd. They've almost like, we've done our job. But this hunt is by no means over. You're going to find these lions are going to continue to push these buffalo. It's difficult to keep count of all the lions though because I only see one lioness. I can't see where the other four lionesses are. They might also be right here kind of hunting. I know one lioness went to the right, but it's very difficult to know where everybody is in a situation like this. And like I say, we've got the best seat for now because we know where some of the lions are. The buffalo are not far away. And so that means we can at least watch what's going on from this point of view. Now here comes one of the bulls again. Here comes some big boys from the buffalo herd. they coming in trotting. You can see the size of them. They are not small, particularly these males. And these are all bulls that have come out. So they're doing their job. They're defending their herd. They're making sure that they are pushing all of these lions away from where the vulnerable females and calves are. Now, can you see some more of them? There come some more lions off that side. So they slowly but surely, it almost looks like the lions are starting to regroup. And they've spread this herd quite a bit now. You can see the herd is spread in the background there. And what they're probably trying to do is just trying to create pockets of buffalo and break this herd up. And then they can start trying to go after females more than anything. But I can promise you as soon as they jump onto a buffalo, if they do, that these males are going to come rushing in. They're going to have a situation where they're going to get very upset very quickly, the boys, and they're going to try and come and chase those lions off. And the lions are going to have to almost hold their nerve. But here come all the females. You see them coming out? So that's female buffalo all in front. And this means that these lions might try and go after them. Aunt Joe, you said you've never seen a sunrise safari on Safari Live this insane. Well, it is absolutely crazy. It's a bit of a bang to start the morning with, that's for sure. We've kind of just found these lions lounging in the road and we didn't expect any of this to happen. Now, there's more lions coming around the back of us. I think they're trying to get to these females, so they're going to try and run in and grab females more than anything else. But the problem is there's lots of male buffalo all around the fringes that are going to try and protect them. But look, noses up. They're trying to smell what's going on. It's going to become a game of the proverbial cat and mouse. But in this case, the mouse is more the cat. And the buffalo have the upper hand now. Now that the element of surprise is gone, the buffalo now have to organize themselves and try and watch as much as possible. So there's one of the lions up on the mound just watching what's going on. But I still don't see a lot of the lionesses. So a lot of the, the big girls... I can't see where they've gone, so I don't know if they're on the other side of this herd or if they're in these thickets. I'm not quite sure. It's kind of a bit pandemonium. It's mostly sub-adults that I can see at the moment, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, careful, girls. You young female like that needs to back off. Now, look, 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 look how the buffalo all come together when the lioness runs. So they all come. As soon as they see a lion, they come together, and it's a wall of animals that come straight towards us. Listen to them snorting as well. So they're sniffing, they're taking deep breaths, trying to hear. The lions are up on the mound. We've got to be hold our nerve a little bit here because obviously we've got lions all around us at the moment and as well as buffalo and I was saying that they do stampede a little bit. You can see they're right in front at the moment. So what we're going to do is probably just try and reverse back a little bit and just try and give a bit more space to the buffalo and the lions that if they are going to have a little interaction that we're not caught in between because the buffalo can be seriously dangerous even in a vehicle. I've seen a number of buffalo hit vehicles before in, in similar situations to this. So I just want to back out a little bit and allow the lions and buffalo a little bit more space. Yeah. 
So it's just going to give them a little bit more room. The lines are also on our side over here. So there we go. That's a little bit better in terms of where we are and this kind of space that the animals all have. The important thing is, even when we watch things like this, is to try and let all of the animals have an equal opportunity. We don't want to influence anything that goes on between you know, the lions or the buffalo. We don't want to have a situation where we, by mistake, chase any of them and they kind of get disturbed. So it's best just to try and get yourself out of the situation and have free path for both lions and, and buffalo to be able to move. Now, these sub-adults on top, they're going to have to stay here for now. They're going to be, have to be a bit careful that they don't get marooned on top there because a buffalo will go out there to chase them. So it's a situation where they've got to be a little more careful as to what's going on. Now, I believe a lot of you are saying that we are very brave to sit in the positions that we're in. Well, I suppose, you know, it, it's, I don't know if it's bravery or stupidity at this stage. No, I'm joking. It, the thing about this is that the buffalo aren't really focused on us. If this was at night, I wouldn't be doing this at all. I certainly wouldn't have allowed the buffalo to get as close as this at night because buffalo at night are a lot more panicky. They don't see nearly as well and therefore they often would run straight into a vehicle. But now during the day like this, they can see what's going on. The lions can see what's going on. And so we have a situation where, you know, we don't have to be as stressed as what's go kind of the buffalo hitting us. You know, the buffalo are at least aware that we're here. So it's all good. But it's just kind of, you don't know where to look in situations like this because it's literally just animals all over the place. And this is the kind of buffalo that they want to go after. It's something of this size. This would be a perfect size buffalo for them to hunt. It's not nearly as big. You can see the horns are not as... apologize about that my audio turned off so my little mic got turned off which is apologies but I think what we're going to have is a situation now where everything is going to kind of be a standoff I don't think these lines are actually going to get this right now I think they've unfortunately wasted the opportunity by not getting that element of surprise that first moment when they rushed the herd is when they needed to hit that calf and, and kind of grab it now the buffalo are far too organized and I think we're in a situation where it's just going to be a standoff you can see the lions are not really into it anymore they're starting to back off so we're going to carry on with our safari and we're going to end this action broadcast i hope that you had an absolutely epic time and remember that you can find us if you search for us on the internet safari live is what you look for and we're going to continue with these buffalo and lions for the rest of the morning hopefully it, things will carry on and if things do heat up again we'll certainly go live once again for our action broadcast but i hope that you've enjoyed it so from vm and myself it's been an absolute pleasure and we'll hopefully see you all soon Wasn't that just something <laughs> that was a bit crazy? But I hope that you guys all enjoyed that as much as I did. It seems as though it's kind of the best of both worlds happened there. We got the hunt, but we didn't get the gore of a kill at this stage. But we'll carry on with this because I think it's going to carry on and it's not going to end just yet. I think there's still going to be a standoff for a while. But while we catch our breath, let's send you back across to you, Biceps Byron, who I think was needed in this whole situation for the Lions to wrestle down a buffalo. Standing in the road, the Lions have now kind of retreated quite a long way they're back to where they were digging out well trying to dig out for warthogs and so you know they're very split at the moment as well there's kind of lionesses all over the place and the sub adults are slowly coming back they're still lingering quite close to those buffalo but there's not really any intent anymore i think what they're trying to do is maybe just get back to try and just kind of you know regroup maybe just get some energy again and then maybe try one more time but the buffalo certainly are, are just taking it very easy now as well they're not chasing the lions down and the lions as you can see are starting to get quite sleepy so it's gone from absolute chaos to calmness quite fast and i have a feeling that once all the lions are together again i'm gonna have a situation where maybe just maybe they might have another go at it but they certainly will try this again later tonight if the buffalo don't move too far they probably trail them while we were sitting here though we also had a leopard calling not too far away so it sounded like a male leopard calling somewhere around Rebecca's and Zoe's area uh, maybe even in the drainage line just north of where we are so it seems like it's all happening in very close proximity 
to this area. But I'm a bit sad for the Nkuumas. As much as, you know, it's hard to watch animals get killed, I would have liked for the Nkuuma pride just to have a really good meal again. You know, a lot of them are, are still looking on the skinnier side, and, and the lioness with the injuries is still kind of quite skinny, so it would have been good for her just to get a nice meal. Although the sub-adults look good. They look like they've got nice little round tummies, and so I was hoping that they would get something, but it seems as though no buffalo for them just yet this morning. You can see they're still looking around, some of them, and like, and like I say, the sub-adults are moving. There's some buffalo in the background, and the buffalo are starting to graze again, which means that they've kind of had enough. And so maybe what we're going to find is that the lions are going to just get into a situation where they're going to try regroup and then maybe try and have another go at the buffalo a little bit later. I think it's going to be a morning of us kind of going back and forth with two of Africa's most iconic creatures. Hello, girl. They are epic lions, though, these Inkumas. And, you know, we've had this situation where Mara has kind of gone offline for a little bit. And I know a lot of you were concerned about lions and that we weren't seeing many lions when the Mara went off. But the lions have very much come back to the party and kind of shown that they are not going to be upstaged by any lions up in the north or eastern corner of Africa. They're going to make sure that they put on just as good a show here in South Africa as well. So... Nice to see the Nkuma Pride being back around, and it's a pity the Birminghams weren't with them. I feel like if they had the two Birminghams with them, those buffalo would have been in a lot more trouble than what they are now. Maybe also the, the Nkumas are a bit rusty. I wouldn't be surprised. You, you know, it's been a while since they've been hunting big herds of buffalo, and so maybe a little bit of kind of sharpening of the technique is needed in order to get them right. Savi, so, you, you thinking night time is what they're going to wait for until they go after these buffalo? I, I suppose so, but you must understand the buffalo are going to move a long way during the course of the day. Particularly if they know there's lions around, they're going to probably start getting into a situation where they're going to think about going quite far and, and trying to get out of this immediate vicinity. But the night time would be better for them. They would have had a much better opportunity to hunt these during the course of the night. And who knows, maybe they did try hunt these particular buffalo last night and went after them and failed and just kind of kept moving with them down this area. I don't think so though. Those buffalo didn't look very alert at all when we first got here. They looked as though they were quite kind of sleepy and, and it was only because the lions kind of ran into that they actually woke up. But you can see how hunting buffalo is hard work because the other two lionesses on our left hand side have gone from head up to flat sleeping tired. That is what that is. <laughs> That's from moving all night. Robin, the cub is fine. It was lurking around at the back here. It was kind of bouncing around close to where the buffalo were and it's, it was just trotting with some of the sub-adults. So every time one of the sub-adults moved, it moved with them. So cub seems absolutely fine and is, I think, just a part of this whole process, just wondering what's going on and kind of going and seeing what's happening. I think it's somewhere in the back here that's where the cub is with these group that is just slowly coming in now. And so hopefully we'll see it arriving and going up onto the mound and joining everybody else. But... They all look okay. Nobody seemed to kind of get caught by any buffalo. Lions are far more agile than the buffalo, so I think everybody's fine. Right. We're going to stay with our lions. And while there's still buffalo around, it seems like a logical place to be. And, and you never know what might unfold as we go forward. While we do that, let's send you back to Ali and see well, what she's been up to this morning while the chaos of the buffalo has been ensuing. They are looking very regal. Well, at least two of the sub-adults are. They're up on this mound where they were trying to dig for warthogs. And they're now just taking a little break and having a bit of a rest. But how beautiful are they looking? They're looking so good. It's crazy to think that two years ago these were not even conceived yet. And that they were, you know, just kind of still a afterthought. At, well, not even an afterthought. They were in the midst, I suppose the females were in the midst of a takeover at this time two years ago but they've really grown into beautiful lions and the Nkuma Pride has done so well to be able to raise as many as they have and it's going to be interesting to see how this pride develops with so many young females going to be joining the ranks because essentially the pride is going to double in size from an adult female point of view and you can imagine if you've got 10 lionesses together and you know at least six seven of them have cubs 
you have a situation where that pride can go well over 20 very, very, very quickly. So it's going to be an interesting time ahead for the Inkoomas. I think finding food is going to be their biggest nemesis when the pride grows to that side. Like I say, 10 adult lionesses needs a lot of food in order to survive. And I wouldn't be surprised we see a lot more kind of breaking up of the pride and they move around a little bit independently of one another. But there's the male kind of just turning around. It's probably turning a little bit like that because of the buffalo that are still behind at the moment. Kara, I've never seen termites attack the cats when they sit on the mounds. Most of the time, the, the cats sitting on big mounds like this, the mounds are well-established, which means that they're really, well, not even well-established, they're old mounds because of their size, and that means that there often is no termites actually even inside there. You take this mound, for example, this mound is no longer active, and there's no termites actually using this, and that's why things like warthogs are living inside of it. If you had to go to... You know, mounds that are active, they generally are a lot smaller and there's no vegetation on them. And you probably find the cats try and avoid mounds like that a lot more than they would big mounds sort of this size that actually allows them the advantage of seeing and being able to kind of see what's going on around them. They like the taller ones because of that reason. So lying on a smaller, still developing mound just doesn't seem like a great idea, I think, for most of the cats. You also probably find that they're quite intuitive. They'll see termites and, and probably be like, no, well, we're not going to go lie there. Insects crawling on us is not for us. And then they'll just carry on to the next mound. There's so many termite mounds out there that they can lie on. I don't think they really will try and deal with termites too often but you can see they're still kind of looking over their shoulder the sub adults more so than anybody else the females are still very much asleep we haven't actually seen the regrouping of all five females yet there's only two females with us and two sub adults that we have at the moment so we're missing quite a number of the pride and i'm pretty sure they just scattered about around this mound and in this long grass once they lie down it becomes increasingly harder to actually see them are you unsure where you want to lie boy I think this is the young male. Might not be, though, actually, now that I look at it. Let's see when he gets up. No, it's not the young male. Jared's buddy, this young male that's part of the Nkuma Pride in all likelihood will not join the Birmingham Pride, unfortunately. He's going to have a situation. So it is one of the girls. Sorry, I don't know. they're getting so big now, it's difficult. But um, you'll have a situation where he won't fight. Um, the woman won't join the Birmingham's. He'll be at that stage. The Birmingham's will be almost, you know, sort of eight, nine years old. They well established coalition. They're not going to just allow a young male into their coalition and steal their rights to females and those kind of things. So they'll probably be the ones that will actually chase him out of here and push him away. He could then join with other young males, but I don't think he would join with any older, bigger males from this area. He might be able to find another young male that's moving around that he can join with. But, you know, in the long run, he'll be pushed out probably by the Birminghams. He's not going to be able to be a part of the Birmingham coalition, I don't think. Stranger things have happened, though, and it, I suppose anything is possible, but I, I don't think so. I think this situation probably means that he'll be cast out alone, which is, is going to be tough for that young male. He's going to have a really tough time of it. Um, you know, being a single male out in the, in the greater Kruger Park system is not very good. There's a lot of big coalitions out here and a lot of male lines, and being on your own makes life quite tough. But look at the size of the claw on that lioness oh no she's not hopefully she'll lick it out again there it is you can just see it sticking out a little bit massive claws that they've got and i'm pretty sure she was hoping she was going to get dug into a buffalo at some point today unfortunately though that's not going to happen so it's now time to get rid of all the mud and all the bits off of it and try and kind of clean up that coat a little bit right while our lions groom themselves and slowly watch the buffalo in the distance let's send you back across to ali who I believe has found, well, the largest of the large. That Well, our lions have now decided it's proper it's nap time. I suppose after hunting buffalo, they've deserved a bit of a rest for now. Everybody's kind of come together and they've come into the most dense, thick grass that we've got. And so while the rain is delightful, it does make viewing of our lions a little tougher, especially when they're all in long grass. And you can see there's a bit of grooming going on, but pretty much everybody is here so there's four lionesses and five of the sub adults that i can see and one and the little cub is also here having a little suckle it's just in the thick long grass very difficult to see it there it is just there on the underside a little to the right there fully there it is it's just got its head down uh, up a little bit there, there it is so it's just suckling on its mom behind a whole bunch of grasses you can see it's almost not 
kind of invisible below the height of the grass at the moment. So having a bit of a drink of milk. So everybody else didn't get breakfast, but the little cub is still sorted and is getting a really nice kind of feed off mom. So everybody's having a bit of a rest now. I don't think they're going to move too much more from here. Anna Maria, I'm pretty sure they're going to rest most of the day. So I would, I would imagine this afternoon we'll find them in a similar place. I don't think they're going to do too much more hunting this morning. Although, in saying that, if maybe the buffalo come past again or something does come their way, the conditions, I suppose, are okay for them to be hunting. It's overcast and fairly cool. So, I mean, they could hunt right now again if an opportunity presented itself. But I would imagine that their next kind of active looking for food is going to be probably only this evening when it starts to get a bit darker. So I think it's now nap time for the rest of the day. Lions do do this. They, funny enough, are quite sort of sleepy during the day here in South Africa. They don't move as much. They tend to do a lot more hunting at night in these areas. You find in, in from what we've seen in the Masai Mara that those lions up there tend to be quite active even during the day. But ours here tend to be a lot more kind of nighttime movers. And Bone, our lions are... Very sleepy. They're a shame. They're having a good nap. Like I say, they've deserved it a little bit. I mean, they're fairly active this morning. They put on quite a show for everybody in the form of chasing buffalo and trying to dig up warthogs. It all kind of went quite chaotic there for a second. So I feel like they've given us quite a bit already and they are now going to have their well-deserved sleep time, which, as you can see, they're all very good at. They're almost pros at sleeping, these guys. And so I think what we're going to do is probably move on and leave them to their nap this morning because well for two reasons one i don't foresee them getting up and moving the buffalo are gone completely from our earshot we can't hear them anymore at all and secondly vm and i both need to tinkle which means that we need to get out of here because we can't tinkle right next to the lines right so let's leave these guys on their own let's see how they fair. We'll come back this afternoon and try and follow up on them, or even on our way home, we'll come past. I actually want to go and see where that buffalo herd went and what they're up to, and whether or not they're still kind of in the general vicinity, or if they're making a hasty retreat out of here. Because you know, if I was a buffalo herd, I would be out of here fairly quickly. Patrick, the most dangerous animal in South Africa is undoubtedly the Anopheles mosquito female. So that is the most dangerous animal that we get out here. But if you are referring to big animals, Patrick, probably depends. I suppose elephants in vehicles would be your most dangerous one um, if you're in a car. Uh, if you're on foot, hippo, elephant and buffalo, those three can all be incredibly dangerous. So those three will be ones that you'd all got to watch out for. But I suppose elephant would be the most dangerous for me, um, not only on foot but even in a vehicle they they can be quite dangerous um, if they if they are pushed in the wrong way and their body language and their behavior is not read correctly you can get yourself into a lot of trouble with elephants so that would be mine but like i say the most dangerous animal if we include everything is most definitely the anopheles mosquito female the carrier of malaria and the killer of more people than anything else in the whole of this area right Oh, there's a leopard right there. So I'm going to actually just stop right here because Byron is following a leopard and I didn't realize they were as close as they were to the lion. So we're going to send you back to Byron, who's over that side and is still with the hook Murray male. Definitely not awake. Part of the reason why it took us a, a while to try and get here, they are in a very thick area. So it's, unless you drive really close to them <laughs> or look for something yellowish, then it's quite tough to see them. But they have not woken up in all of this commotion, cars coming, leopards moving around, leopards calling. They're definitely not bothered by anything. Even at one point, I had suspected that perhaps they were on the trail of the buffalo again as the buffalo seem to have moved further west, but nope, does not seem like that is the case. These guys are very happy sleeping down here. Now, I can't see all of them, but it is quite thick in this particular spot where we are, so I'm sure they're all somewhere around here, but the one that we were looking at initially, so the adults are here. So I don't think that they've left the younger ones and carried on with the hunt. Likely they're gonna leave that for this afternoon. Maybe they'll leave the younger ones here as well, protected, there are a few termite mounds where they can climb up and again, it's very thick vegetation. So if they do decide to carry on following those buffalo, then they're going to, they can leave them here and they can go and do their business, <laughs> try and perhaps 
breakdown in Buffalo. I heard that it was quite an exciting sighting this morning. So who knows, maybe they've just depleted all of their energy. It is getting a little bit warmer now. So this is normally the time of the day where lions decide to take a rest. Now, we're not too sure as to where they came from, but they could have done quite a look around during the night. And it's perhaps the reason why they've decided that the best thing to do now is to sleep throughout the day. <laughs> it's quite overcast, so they won't even have to move too much. Ranger Robert, uh, if Hukumori came closer to the lions or had he bumped into them, definitely they would have smelled each other. Now, in between different predators, the uh, interactions tend to be very violent. Uh, or they almost like they either try to avoid each other. So maybe he's picked up the scent of the lion and decided to go a little bit further east to try and avoid, the, avoid them because he does recognize them as a potential enemy but also with the lionesses having their young ones here and especially uh, a very very young cub i reckon they also would have been quite aggressive towards hukumuri perhaps even chased him and the easiest thing for him would have they they were quite far um um east from where we are now and it doesn't seem like the lions didn't even notice they are very used to the car noises and i don't think they picked up on the on the fact that there was a male leopard around here perhaps even two or as byron says perhaps a leopard and an unknown gender leopard <laughs> Uh, seems like we lost the stream there for a little bit so apologies for any inconveniences we are still here All of us hanging on to our cats as we can. And have a rest later on. Seems like Byron has um, now found a new friend, more feathery one. So let's head over to him and find out if he was going to give the leopard's position away. Well, with that reputation and looking at the lions here, people could actually think that I've murdered them, Byron. So let's not get too much into that. <laughs> Luckily, we can see them breathing. So we all know that I would be incapable of ever doing anything to any living creature. <laughs> and in my defense, I didn't choose to be the murderer or the singing coach. Because first of all, I cannot sing. So that was already irony, number one. And number two, I don't think I can forgive Rebecca for making me the murderer. <laughs> That was that was quite unreal. But I must say, I think Kirsten and I did a very good job. As a murderer? No, that's horrible. <laughs> Chris is saying that I was very convincing as a murderer, but she was almost like my, you know, my partner in crime. She was the gun nut, apparently, according to the game. So I don't think everyone, anyone, actually, <laughs> got, got a good part in that, in that whole ordeal. It was a very interesting night, though, and some characters, some people did very well. And Tristan was a very sneaky character as he was the undercover assassin pretending to be Scuba Steve. So I'm just going to leave that hanging in there. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> it was though a very interesting night. And I think it's spiked up our investigating skills. As for today, this morning, there have been so many things that have been happening around. And I'm not too sure still if we can confirm that it was Gajima, the other male leopard, or if it was another one. It's definitely an unusual morning in terms of Leopards, lions, as you can see, they went for the hunt, not too bothered, and this has been it. This is where they're staying, probably for the rest of the day. So the buffalo herd didn't go that far away from where we are, and they are actually close to Trios Dam. So if they get thirsty, I wouldn't be surprised if they make their way down there um, during the day, and perhaps in during the afternoon, the lions will decide to make that their way down there. As to where the leopards might be this afternoon, I'm not entirely sure. As we've seen this morning, Hukumori likes to walk and he likes to mission. So who knows, maybe Tristan will be able to find him this afternoon, because <laughs> obviously Byron and I are not allowed. <laughs> Seems like Tristan is 